Hi, I'm Mark Woodman. I'm the president of the Color Marketing Group. And a question I get a lot with a trend, a color trend organization such as ours is, where do these colors come from? And very often it's thought that it's a secret society and we all sit in a back room somewhere and suddenly chat away and suddenly go, hmm, I think kiwi green would be nice. And then magically, kiwi green appears everywhere. And uh, every once in a while, there's, you feel like there's a little chicken before the egg sort of coming along. However, there's a lot of research that's involved with it. And associations, nonprofit associations like Color Marketing Group that you can become a member of in, in professional design is a great way of really kind of learning the, the inner scope of what goes into it, how the automobile industry decides you're gonna do colors or people who make vacuum cleaners or toasters or tissues and, and paper towels. And we have members from all those types of companies that are there. Uh, it's really everyday searching and keeping your eyes open all the time as to what's going on around you. It is influences and inspirations from food, from travel, from politics. Politics is an interesting one in the United States. Uh, previous elections, the news media started naming red and blue states. And we kind of hadn't really talked about those before. And then the most recent election, they came up with states that were undecided and started saying, well, these are the purple states because they we're not sure whether which direction they're going to go. And it suddenly put purple in the mindset of consumers in the United States. And they started thinking of purple differently. Purple suddenly became kind of neutral, kind of non-committal. And if you think about it, purple is probably one of the least non-committal colors you can have. Uh, but it was an interesting way to see it show up and it actually came from politics and then we started seeing it show up again in fashion and in home and it's still marching forward. As a matter of fact, Color Marketing Group as a color going forward has one called Boys and Berry. Um, and it's the take on purple that crosses gender lines. So it's just as good for um, men as it is for women and all kinds of different levels uh, for the color. But, but back to the trends themselves and where we pull those and where they come from is all these inspirations. So as I said, travel. Travel's a great one. Food. Food is very important. Uh, actually, a lot of his, uh, Hispanic cuisine, Catalan cuisine, uh, Spanish-influenced Latin cuisine, a lot of those were precursors to the Latin design movement that we had a number of years ago. People became familiar with the food first and went into a restaurant and suddenly you saw interesting folkware on the people that were celebrating their culture and colors on the walls and artwork and the spices that went into the food and people started thinking, huh, red might be an interesting color on the ceiling of my dining room. I'm certainly appetizing enough as a color. And then you started seeing how these were coming through and at the same time, the music industry was coming through and we were getting great influences from Jennifer Lopez, Mark Anthony, the Buena Vista Social Club, I even had a documentary about them from Cuba. Cuba became a new focus of interest, possibly as a travel destination, as well as food, as well as culture. So all these things play into it and these are the things we look at at, for instance, in color marketing group or just in, in trend organizations. What's driving them? What sits behind that? Where have we been and where is it going when we start to see all these new interesting trends? There's a wonderful quote from Paul Smith, who's a designer from England, and I will hopefully get this correct for you. He says, um, inspiration is everywhere, and if you don't see it, look again. So I invite you to look into our organization and find your own inspiration uh, for all your own design work. Thank you.